Hello lovely people, how are you all today? I hope you are all feeling absolutely marvellous. So today I'm going to talk about one of the ways that I preserve my beans or store my beans if you like. Now we probably all grow beans, climbing beans, runner beans, pole beans, I think you call them in America, bush beans, a myriad of beans. And throughout the whole of July and beginning of August, I'm sure you're all eating loads of them when they're young and tender and gorgeous. But then it gets to the stage where <laughs> you just can't eat another bean. I mean, you seriously think, if I eat one more bean, I'm going to turn into a bean. So I'm going to talk today a little bit about how you can preserve them and store them. So I'm sitting in my nice little cosy corner here in a minute. I'm going to put some music on or put the radio on because I've got a lot of podding to do. So whichever bean you're looking at, whether it's a runner bean, a baloshi, the rock and core, whatever type of bean it is, there are th sort of three stages in the life of that pod and bean at which you can use them slash store them. So, for example, I'm just looking, I haven't really got one here. Um, ah, I've got a great pile of them. Let's pretend with this one. So, I wouldn't normally do this with my climbing beans. The only reason I'm doing it is because the weather, combination of wind and rain, trashed two rows and decked them onto the floor. Normally, I'd leave them to dry. But let's pretend this is a nice young tender bean. So let's pretend this is three or four weeks ago. So with our lovely young tender beans, what we're actually eating and storing is the pod. So it's sort of before the bean is really developed and we're just going for those green gorgeous pods. You'll eat loads and loads and loads, you'll get sick of them. And then at that stage you can either chop them up and freeze them that's what most people do. You could pickle them. I personally don't pickle anything, just I, I really, I don't like pickles. Um, it's okay for something like olives or capers, but for the rest of my veg, it, that kind of, it's too much of a strong flavour that I wouldn't want to have it with something else. And the other thing you can do is to can them. Now I know in the UK we talk about bottling and in the States and North America they talk about canning. I'm talking about canning in the proper sense. This is a really low acid vegetable. You cannot preserve it without either A, adding acid or B, using pressure. So I don't have a pressure canner. Um, they're quite expensive, they take up quite a lot of room and for me it's just not practical. I guess if you're in a large family with a lot more land, then it'd be well worth the investment. But for me, it's not worth bothering. I would just normally go to the final stage, which is drying. So that comes to the stage I'm at now. So you've got your young and tender ones. You can either freeze them, pickle them or can them. And essentially, you're harvesting and storing the pod. You will all probably have got to this stage by now. <laughs> Look at the size of it. It's ginormous. And you can see, hopefully you can see from the side how the beans are nice and fat in there. So at this stage, they're still really green, but the pod is really tough and it's disgusting to eat. If someone served you that, you'd be spitting out in two minutes. No matter how polite you are, you'd be spitting it out. But all is not lost. Now I've heard about people taking them down at this stage and chopping them in the compost heap because they're too tough to eat. But they're forgetting the treasure that lies within. So let's have a quick squiz. I'm just gonna, just literally, this is the bottom third of this pod I'm just cracking open to show you. <gasps> Look at those jewels! Aren't they beautiful, great big fat beans? Listen, if Jack was given those to trade for the cow, he'd be delighted. These are beautiful, beautiful beans and so full of nutrition. 
this is going to be great for me over the winter. Now, there's no point in me trying to dry these at this stage because they're far, far too wet and immature. They'll rot before they dry. So, you can either have the little green pods tender and do what you will with them, or get to the end of the season and have them dry. But if you're stuck in the middle of the season, like I am now with these great long gnarly tough pods, I'm going to preserve them, store them, known as, it's called demi-sec. I'm just gonna show you those again because they're beautiful. So demi-sec, simply translated, means half dry. You may have heard me talking about that before in terms of the Coco de Pampol, because they do not, they store well, but they don't cook well from dry. They're too tough. So we get them at the demi-sec stage where the bean is at its absolute max, maximum fatness and juiciness, but just before it starts to go dry. I've got an absolute mountain to pod. They're a little bit tougher to pod when they're green rather than when they're dry. So I'm gonna spend the next two hours podding and then we'll catch up in the kitchen to see the next step. So I've just done my final lot of podding and I'm gonna get ready to now freeze this little lot. So a little word of advice, if, if you've got a mountain like I have, obviously it's better to sort of pick things in small amounts and deal with them immediately. I didn't really have any choice because of what the weather did to the plants. So what I've done at home is I've divided that amount into sort of four piles, if you like. I've kept, I've kept the ones I'm not podding in the fridge in their pods whilst I'm working on the others just to try and sort of stop that deterioration happening because as soon as the plant as soon as sorry as soon as you've got the pod off the plant the nutrients the whole quality everything is starting to decrease it's starting to decompose literally the minute it comes off the plant because it's no longer alive so let me show you these this is pretty much one of my last batches Look at that side, aren't they beautiful? So there were a few rogue gigantes in there. Look at the size of them. Oh my goodness, that's like a meal in one bean. And you'll also see, let me see if I can pick out for you with the, the difference in colour. So this is all the same kind of beans. They're just at different stages of maturity. So obviously these were lower down the plant, one of the first pods to start coming. And these are slightly more recent but they're absolutely gorgeous and I'll treat them all in exactly the same way the only reason I would separate them is if I was going to blanch them because if I was going to blanch those gigantes I'd probably do them for two minutes the big runner beans I would do for say a minute and a half and the little tiddly runny bean runny beans <laughs> runner beans I would just do for a minute so on the question of blanching I did a video a couple of months ago for the broad beans, or fava beans as you call them in the States. That explains why and how we do blanching. Principally, it helps to store for longer, to retain sort of nutrition, texture, all that sort of thing. That's fine if I want to store something, say with the broad beans, if I want to have them in 9-12 months time, brilliant. If I don't blanch, if you don't blanch, you definitely want to be using those veggies within three to six months at most. After six months, put them on the compost heap. I, because I've got so many beans at the moment and I just have no time, I don't have time to blanch. But that's fine anyway because I'll use this lot up, I will, they'll easily be gone by Christmas. With all my stored produce, I try to use the stuff from the freezer first so that things which are bottled, dried, that sort of thing, I hold those back just in case I have a power cut, the freezer breaks, whatever it is. I don't want to be putting all of my stuff into the freezer, all my eggs in one basket, as it were. So I'm not going to blanch these today, but I will be consuming them pretty pronto. So just while you're there, I'm going to start spreading them out. Now, for your beans and all, any of these kind of vegetables where you want to be able to have a scoop out of them individually, rather than getting a solid lump, 
you want to use a technique called open freezing. And you can probably hear their rattling in the tray at the moment. I'm not going to get these all in. Basically, I'll show you now. I'm just spreading them out onto a tray. This just happens to be a, a roasting tin. So there they are spread out. I'll pop them in the freezer now. I'll give them about an hour in the freezer. Then I'll take the tray out, scoop them off the tray and um, box them up into individual boxes which are a more sort of handy size for using for one or two meals at a time. So I have still got a few left over in there. What I'll do is I'll see if I can find another tray, but I don't know if I'm gonna have room in the freezer to put two trays at once. So if I haven't, um, I'm just gonna get these guys straight back into the fridge. So, I, whoopsie, sorry. I will get these in the freezer now and I'll see you in about an hour or so. Go have a cup of tea or go and do some more podding. Okay, so the beans have had about an hour in the freezer, in the open tray. And I'm just now, oh, they're called scooching them up and putting them into uh, individual pots. It holds about, these pots hold about 500 ml, so I guess it's only 500 grams. These pots are great, they just make it so easy to get stuff into the freezer. It's all stacked up using up every inch of space. So that's my first tray done of this lot. And there we go. Ready to go in the freezer. I, and I can either have a lot out in one go or you know, have half a portion of those out, make it uh, sort of a handful for soup or something. Yay! It's, it's such a good feeling, not only to grow your own food, but to get it stored so that after this beautiful flush of summer when we're having so much fresh stuff, we know that there's something tucked away for the winter and next spring when there won't be much going on. There'll be a little bit going on in the garden, but not nearly as much. So it's a very satisfying feeling, well worth the time. You know, you put all of that work into the garden. So almost as much effort, if not more, put into storing things, so there's always something to nosh on. Cheerio for now, and I'll see you with the next harvest really soon, I hope. Take care.